Hello everyone, this is Avionics, equipment of civil aircraft, and today we will continue our talking about modern electronics equipment on board of aircraft. Previously I have told you that avionics and electronics is uh, hardly connected, because they use it. And uh, during the development process of electronics, uh, there are different stages. And previously we specify uh, two main stages. The first one, it was uh, introduce, introduction of transistor technology. Uh, thus, it was switch from vacuum to semiconductor. And uh, then, a little bit later, in 1990, we have talked about computer revolution, where we've got uh, small sizes of computers and it makes possible to implement it on board of aircraft. Uh, actually, there are a little bit uh, more stages and we will uh, continue our talking about nature of electronic devices. And then uh, we can talk uh, about avionics uh, much more uh, precisely. First of all, let's uh, summarize what we know about electronics equipment. And if uh, we mark uh, different technologies on their historical scale, you will see that uh, before approximately 19 uh, 60, it was uh, only vacuum tubes. Thus, it, mostly it was analog devices and it uh, connects with a huge size uh, and uh, big weight of uh, such kind of electronical equipment. Invention of uh, semiconductor and transistor make a huge leap in uh, electronics and as well in avionical, uh, avionics equipment. Because vacuum tubes has been uh, replaced by small transistor uh, technologies. A little bit later, uh, approximately 10 years, uh, one decade, uh, was required to pack small group of transistor in one small scheme, which we called microchip. These microchips uh, helps to uh, reduce size because uh, it use uh, less wires connection because uh, some parts of scheme uh, has been parked together in one small piece of uh, electronic equipment. Next, uh, I will connect it with 1980s uh, optical fiber introduction to electronic equipment. However, you can tell me that uh, it was invented much more early. However, on board of aircraft, uh, first experiments uh, took place uh, during this period of time. Therefore, optical fiber and optical devices uh, was placed on board of aircraft. I think optical, it means optical fiber and uh, some probably laser gyros uh, for measure particular parameters of aircraft or for transferring the data. Uh, a little bit later, it was introduction of surface mount technology. However, it needs maybe 10 or 20 years to become it uh, much more popular because uh, you know that nowadays all electronics, okay, 90% of electronics has been made uh, based on SMT technology. It helps to reduce size because uh, there is only small piece of uh, metal required to connect to their uh, main board. Also, uh, SMT components uh, are small size. Thus, it helps to also reduce weight and sizes. 
And uh, as you know, 1990, it is a computer revolution. Uh, all of these technologies makes possible to switch to binary data transmission. And uh, now we call it digital avionics. And it helps to switch algorithms from uh, structural schemes based on electronic components to the software part. And it gave a huge advantage because we can improve, we can verify and we can modify only software without uh, changing in their hardware part. Thus, 1990 is a computer revolution, Compu personal computers become smaller, processor technology uh, helps to uh, integrate uh, some, so, some, some tens of thousand transistors in one uh, small piece of uh, electronic device. Thus, uh, processors and a little bit later microcontrollers and microprocessors uh, helps to uh, change uh, electronics and um, avionics as well significantly if you can uh, compare 100 years of developing process. Also, quite important to specify that uh, approximately at the middle we can uh, divide all of this range into two types where analog avionics and analog signals uh, have been used before approximately 1970, 1970 and digital avionics uh, after this period. Transformation from analog to digital avionics uh, also helps a lot and nowadays we can talk only about digital equipment on board of aircraft. And uh, let's try to consider why digital equipment are very popular. I think you know uh, answer on my question. However, I would like to clarify it uh, maybe just a little bit. Uh, when we talk about analog devices or systems which perform particular task, usually we talk about analog signal. In analog systems and in analog equipment, during the transferring data or data processing, we uh, connect particular uh, parameter of electrical circle as amplitude, fuzz or frequency. However, amplitude uh, is used much more often uh, with physical parameter. Thus, if you have barometrical altitude in feet, thus we need to uh, connect particular value or particular range of barometrical altitude with uh, voltage in a circle, in electrical circle. Uh, in digital avionics, uh, we working with uh, uh, particular momental values of physical uh, value. It means that uh, we need to apply discretization process uh, to um, get particular um, value. Okay, if in analog signal, in any time continuously we've got physical value because our voltage it is a continuously changed signal. Thus, in any time of this signal getting, we can uh, get physical value which we estimate or process. In case of digital signal, we don't know what's going on between uh, discretization time. 
It means that during the discretization, we catch some data and then transform it to their binary code. And then trans, uh, trans, uh, transmit this binary code by uh, particular uh, amplitude variation to another device. After some period of time, we catch another value of amplitude and then also code it in binary code. And the main question was going on between discretization time with the signal. Digital systems is not continuously. And in this case, we cannot talk that digital system can operate in real time. Because in the middle of discretization time, we do not know what's going on with uh, physical value. And this is the main problem of digital avionics. And to solve this question, we need to minimize time of discretization. Uh, it is the first possible case. And the, another one, we need to apply some math formulas to interpolate uh, some values to get a continuous curve. And then using this continuous curve. Uh, therefore, uh, this is the main disadvantage of digital avionics. Because digital avionics, by its nature, cannot work in real time. Because after the measurement, we need to transform it to binary code. Thus, we need to apply analog to digital converter, means this, which discretize uh, signal. Then we need to get some values. Then we need to transmit it. And in this case, it requires some time. And uh, we cannot get in the receiver uh, actual value. Because previously, we spent some time for analog digital conversion and transmitting. And in analog signal, we have continuously signal. And it means that in any particular time, we've got a uh, physical value. Therefore, uh, it is main disadvantage of digital avionics and main advantage of analog signal. Uh, if you talk about uh, data transferring, digital avionics has a lot of advantages in comparison with one disadvantage. The first one, if we use digital signals, it means that we can operate with the values in binary form. And it means that we can send this data to data processing equipment, microcontroller or processor, like in our mobile phones. And it can solve and uh, we can get result also in binary form, which we can represent in uh, our system. And in this case, the main advantage that we can uh, transform data from sensors to digital form and then perform all system function at the software level, at the processing equipment. And it gives a lot of advantages in comparison with a hardly developed scheme with a connected analog devices. Next one. Digital signals are more protected from noise influence. Uh, if we talk about digital signals, you can see it is just a sequence of pulses. And during the 
signal propagation in the wire uh, on this wire on any wire electromagnetic induction can act and it causes uh, to adding or to appearance some currents in these wires and then these currents will be added to their uh, transmitted informative signal and finally we've got uh, digital signal with some noise which just added to our input signal. However, during the uh, transformation of data, we will uh, recognize our sequence of uh, logical points and ones. Thus, digital data transmission are protected uh, from influence of noise. If we compare it with analog signal, in analog signal uh, we uh, compare uh, voltage uh, in most time with uh, some physical value. And during the electromagnetic induction influence uh, we can have degradation of our information signal. Thus, uh, our physical parameter value will be changed. And then if we use it uh, next, we need to take into account some noise influence. And this is a real problem because on board of aircraft we have a lot of uh, sources of electromagnetic radiation. And in this case we need to take into account uh, noisy environment and electromagnetic induction uh, influence. Also, uh, if you talk about digital data data, it means that we are one physical layer, we can transfer any sort of data. If you talk about analog uh, data link, in this case, we can uh, use only one physical layer for one parameter. And uh, on board of historical aircraft, we have tons of wires because each parameter requires using one pair of wires. And uh, finally, all of that cost uh, reducing dimensions, size and uh, weight of uh, onboard equipment. Thus, digital avionics, of course, uh, it has multiple advantages in comparison with only one disadvantage related to real time. If we compare data transmission in digital in analog form, for example, we have a barometrical altimeter, however, it uses uh, static pressure measured uh, on board and with a sensor located near the uh, static pressure tube. In this case, analog sensor can measure uh, static pressure value if it is analog form. Just manipulate voltage in a two wires circle and then uh, these wires will be sent to the cockpit where we've got instrument with arrow for indicating uh, barometrical altitude. And we can see that during the transition, electromagnetic induction causes some cars, uh, currents which will be uh, added to our input signal. And it causes degradation of parameters. And finally, our arrow will be fluctuated. Uh, that means not uh, accurate measurements. Because in this case, noise influent into their direct parameter value. In case of digital data transmission, uh, we get the same analog signal and then uh, pack this signal uh, with uh, analog to digital uh, transformation. Then we've got sequence of uh, binary data, points and zeros, 
and then uh, electromagnetic induction uh, had action and you can see we've got some disturbances in signals however threshold threshold value or threshold detector can easily detect where we've got one or zero thus the whole sequence of parameter will be recovered in the receiver thus in cockpit uh, on instrument we have correct visualization of barometrical altitude and this is the main advantage of uh, main advantage of uh, digital data transmission and digital uh, equipment usage okay uh, however how we can uh, play with the sensors because usually inside of a uh, sensor we have a sensing element and in most cases this sensing element uh, compare oh, okay or oh, sense uh, physical value action with the help of analog influence it means that uh, most sensors are analog and what we need we just need uh, immediately transform from analog to digital our physical value thus uh, physical value influent onto the analog sensor and uh, we have analog to digital converter immediately uh, near the analog circle to reduce number of wires here and it means uh, reduce uh, the place where noise can uh, can act and then uh, we can uh, get uh, digital data however usually modern uh, components uh, uh, can provide much more welcome technology we can at the sensor mount some small microprocessor which can uh, provide for us uh, primary data processing of measured sig measured value thus uh, it can be microcontroller with applied for example kalman filter to reduce number of noise and then we've got a filtered value and the same structure we can apply for different sensors and uh, analog digital converter and uh, microcontroller is too small that we can pack everything in few uh, millimeters okay five millimeters five into five millimeters and uh, here you can see some uh, examples of uh, pr static pressure sensor which can be used uh, by the same idea also uh, i can uh, show you actually uh, i like uh, raspberry pi and different uh, coding in python thus uh, it is uh, a digital sensor for temperature and you can see uh, how small is it and inside of this metal tube we have sensor plus analog digital converter plus uh, microcontroller for improving performance of measuring and after that we've got only three wires two of them for voltage for power supply and one one yellow for data transferring and all of that we can send to modern small computation equipment like raspberry pi and then we can do whatever we would like with this temperature that's why you can see that uh, modern sensor it is not just sensing device it includes uh, it may include multiple components which uh, reduces uh, which reduces uh, okay no sorry which increase performance of measurements and also code with particular uh, 
uh, data tra traveling format. Thus, we can use one wire for transferring multiple parameters. It can be related to uh, another sensor. Okay. Uh, And if you talk about uh, digital electronics, of course, we need to take into account that we need to operate with uh, binary data. That's why I propose you to memorize from school, uh, because I think uh, everyone nowadays in school uh, learn about binary digital conversion and vice versa. That's why if you would like to convert data from decimal to binary, we just need to divide uh, our value into base of our counting system. In case of binary, it is 2. This, thus, if you would like to transform 47 to binary form, we divide 47 into 2. And, each, and at each step of division, we can have reminder. And the sequence of this reminder, it will be binary code. And uh, you can see that 47 in the base of 10 in their binary system will have the following format. 1, 0 and 4, 1. Uh, another uh, quite often used approach it is use a base uh, of powered by 2. That's why we can use uh, 2 in uh, power 0, 2 in power 1, 2 in power 2, 2 in power 3. And what we need, we just need uh, minus from our value the highest values of our weight. And uh, where we can uh, minus, we need to put 1. If we cannot minus, uh, we need to uh, put 0. That's why we also has a sequence of uh, binary data. Opposite transformation, um, also quite simple. If you would like to get in data from binary to decimal, uh, first of all, we need to multiply our binary matrix with the matrix of weight. And then find the sum. That's why if we have the following digital number, uh, we need to multiply each value with a particular value of our weighted coefficients and find in the sum. And finally, we've got value. There are a lot of another approaches. It is not only one possibility to transform in one uh, side and in other. There are more than four. Thus, if you would like, you can uh, just uh, Google and find answers uh, how we can transform uh, in other algorithms. Also, uh, quite often we use if we have only uh, ones in our binary data, we can easily transform it to the decimal by following formula. Decimal number is equal to powered by number of ones minus one. Thus, if we have three ones, it means that decimal number it will be 2 power 3 minus 1 thus it will be 8 minus 1 is 7 uh, at the physical level binary signals is transmitted with analog signal um, because analog we cannot miss, because binary it is uh, logical data. However, at the physical level, when we can touch this uh, binary data, we need to use analog signal. Uh, the same, we can use analog, uh, we can use amplitude, uh, frequency or phase. However, uh, much more oftenly, 
uh, amplitude is used here. And uh, there are different represent uh, there are different representation of logical stages. For example, in case of digital data bus of Ring 499, uh, for transferring logical one, we can use positive pulse or pulse with a positive amplitude, usually equal like plus 10 volts. If you would like to transfer zero, it is negative pulse with an amplitude minus 10 volts. That's why detector can easily detect uh, logical one or logical false because we can use in the receiver structure just simple threshold value. Therefore, if threshold will be done, it means that we have positive one. If negative threshold uh, can be done, it will be logical zero. Uh, however, different signals can be used for data transferring. Uh, for example, in Ring 629, it uses the following signal. Uh, thus, uh, logical one is a sequence of positive and negative pulse. And logical zero, it is a sequence which is opposite to logical one, is negative and positive pulse. It has few advantage, uh, few advantages uh, about which we will talk a little bit later. Also, if you would like to transfer data in digital data bus or between different parts of one scheme, we need also to know that we cannot just put our binary data in the data link. Usually data transmission in data channels are performed with the help of digital words. It means that we have a specific canvas for data traveling. It's like a packet of data. That's why we need to put our measured value into a specific canvas and then uh, send it. And usually this canvas or digital word uh, use, uh, for example, address of sensor which measure this value or includes address of system which requires this data with some additional things. Thus, uh, all the whole digital equipment operates with the digital words. And if you have a quite long sequence of data for transferring, uh, we can divide uh, the whole sequence into the a uh, few or some amount of digital words. In this case, this sequence of data words called data string. And in some case, uh, these uh, data strings can be uh, uh, can be grouped in the digital message. That's why we have digital message divided into the digital string, and then digital string includes multiple digital words. And uh, finally, uh, I would like to uh, talk about modern onboard uh, equipment structure scheme. Thus, after the 1990, on board of aircraft, we have multiple systems. You know that each system, it is computer-based system. Uh, navigation equipment, communication equipment, surveillance equipment, automatic guidance system and other systems on board, it is separate computers. Okay, it's some kind of computers. And uh, all of these computers are connected to their one digital data bus, or uh, it can use some local uh, sub-networks. However, at the general, we can talk about global digital data link. 
And uh, this global digital data bus or link uh, support all network uh, capabilities for data transferring between different units on board of aircraft. Thus, modern aircraft, it is a computer network with multiple systems like computers. And uh, in cockpit, like in PC, we have only monitors or displays with uh, keyboards and uh, some input-output uh, devices. Thus, in cockpit we have electronic flight instrument system, which is also connected to digital data bus. We have communication guidance and input-output devices, also uh, interrogating uh, particular unit or components of avionics via digital data bus. Thus, digital data bus, it is a network on board of aircraft which support uh, data traveling between uh, input-output devices, uh, displays and systems in some avionics tray or some, anywhere on board of aircraft, if we can talk about particular sensors. This is the main structure of modern uh, avionics equipment. And uh, by this scheme, I would like to conclude for today. Uh, please uh, take attention. Next time we will talk uh, much more about uh, line replaceable units on board of aircraft. Thus, thank you very much for watching. Uh, see you next time.